Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to take a look at uh, Asus Prime Z390P. I only have schematic, actually I don't have schematic for it, um, but I only have board view for the Z390A, <laughs> which is not too helpful because it's a different board, but it has some similarities as far as how it turns on. Um, it's, it's the same, so it was helpful. Um, what's wrong with this board? It has bent pins um, on the CPU socket. It's LGA 1151 um, and no missing pins. So we're going to try to uh, correct the position of the pins and see if that was the only problem. If not, it's going to be a little harder with no board view and no schematic. <laughs> Let's see. All right, it's connected. Now let's see if it boots. We have two LEDs lit up. And I can't see the fan. That's these two. Okay, it's booting. Nothing's getting hot, but let's take a look under a thermal camera. Forty three degrees on this guy, that's a bit high since there's not even a CPU inside. And something's getting hot here. That looks like traces. Or there's something on the other side. Oh there's LEDs here. nothing there just LEDs this is good 30 degrees that's fine and these coils 44 so this is V core over here MOSFETs under there and they they produce V core. But it looks like we have V core. Now there might be a short over here on the socket and that's why we're getting hot, but they're not getting short hot. Uh, what is this? Is it a reflection or is it hot? Yeah, 32 degrees, that's fine. And there's more MOSFETs over here, probably for powering RAM. Okay, I don't see anything that would be alarming here. 
70 degrees, that would be alarming. 46 is fine. We are barely, well, we're barely warm, but they're just warm, they're not hot. Okay, I call it no shorts at the moment. Now let's take a look at that LGA socket. Doesn't look too bad. There's only a few of them bent. Then we're going to switch to the board view and identify those and see where they're making connection.
Alrighty, so the board is reassembled um, with nice i5 and uh, very crappy HDD Western Digital and only 8 gigs of RAM, but that's more than enough for testing. So far, I don't see any issues with it, so I think the bent pin was the only the only problem. I also installed the little um, Wi-Fi card for connectivity. And that's it. It's all powered from the 550 PSU. I tested both um, PSI, uh, PCI Express ports. They're both working. Uh, actually, onboard graphics is performing a little better than this one, uh, GeForce GT730. Yeah, it is crappy card, but I expected it to perform better than onboard graphics. Uh, on the motherboard, but no, that's actually performing a little better. I mean, they're both crappy, but um, surprisingly, that one is a little bit better. And let's see what we have here. Um, I ran a performance test. It said that board doesn't perform that great. Um, but I installed three games, Quake, Age of Empires, and Nation Red. They um, both are working pretty well. Let's um, let's get the Age of Empires. There's um, to play multiplayer games, especially 4v4. You need to run to play any multiplayer game. You need to run performance test in the game. <clears throat> and if you score uh, 950 or above, you can play 1v1. If you score around a thousand or above. You can play all multiplayer games. This is a game from it's like 20 years, 20 years ago that this game came out. 20 or even more than that. So it's a very old game, but this is remastered version, which is crazy big uh, and crazy um, demanding. Which is weird. Uh, I used to play this game back in the day on Pentium 100. <laughs> Alright, let's run a benchmark. So if we score above a thousand, this setup is more than enough to play, to play Age of Empires. And that's even 1,000. This means now we can play ranked multiplayer games. All right, so I say this is a fix. And that was the only thing wrong with this board. Just bent pins on the CPU socket. Nothing more. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you in the next one.